Good evening, this is the Oscar X. We're here with Brother Bro. We got the can announcement, so it's time to talk about the can announcement. And an announcement from us, an announcement from us is that I'm not going to can, but we can wipe that tear away that you have in your eye, and we can save it for later, because this man is going to can instead. I'm actually going to can is stealing your identity to do so. Attending can as the Oscar expert, impersonating the Oscar expert as I'm there. And if you address me as anything else, I will not speak to you. And I'm very excited. I, I am very excited because Ken is your favorite film festival you've been to. Yeah. And I'm pretty happy with this lineup. I'm pretty this happy with this good, lineup. This is a good lineup. There are yeah. goodies in here. Even though we know more about like the big films like Megalopolis, of course, or Kinds of Kindness, I am also really excited for the films that are going to surprise me. What, what is she doing over here? Oh, she's just leaving. So we're going to cover every film in mm -hmm. competition and maybe a couple outside of that. The opening night film, I guess we could start out there even though that's not in competition, I believe. Yeah, the opening night film is never in competition. The opening night film has to like release in France within a couple weeks of, of mm. its premiere. So it's often not like the best movie there, but this is Quentin Dupieux. He is the director, he's most known for Rubber, the killer tire movie, as people say, but he's made a lot of films since then. Most of them show up in like, you know, the 3.5 range on Letterboxd. Like he just makes quirky comedies. He's doing his thing. You gotta respect him for it. I've actually never seen one of his films, but it'll probably be a fun opening night. Mm. Er, and it has Lea Sadu and Vincent Lindon in it. Yeah, that's the difference between this and his other films is that there's some stars in here. I mean, there's some of the biggest actors in France right now. I'm pretty excited for this. It should be fun. We can just go in order, alphabetical yeah. order with competition. We have a movie called All We Imagine as Light. This is, I think, the debut uh, non-documentary film from Payal Capadilla. Her last film won a documentary prize at Cannes and it was very acclaimed. The couple of images that we have from this movie look pretty nicely shot. We got a Nora from Sean Baker. We knew that this would happen. We're very excited to see it. It's a comedy about a sex worker. It stars Mikey Madison and Sean Baker. You know, we just we just are very interested in whatever he does. Could be my most is this is one of your most anticipated. This is oh, yeah. like maybe top oh, of the yeah. list for me. It was one of the films I was most hoping would be in this lineup. And we're gonna get a great lead performance, which will probably be Indie Spirit nominated. We have The Apprentice in the Cannes competition yeah, lineup. Now, huge one. you may ask yourself, this doesn't feel like a Cannes film. Well, you gotta, you gotta, you know, Cannes, they like to invite the same filmmakers back over and over. Ali Abbasi's last film was Holy Spider was in competition at Cannes. And Border, I think, was out of competition, if I'm not mistaken. Both movies were very good. And so this filmmaker has that Cannes clout. But also, I think the decision for them to put this film at Cannes speaks to the quality here, like, it seems awards friendly on the surface. There's a lot of stars in it. It's a biopic and it's about a subject of very hot interest right now. Donald Trump. Yeah, Donald Trump. Donald Trump in the 70s <clears throat> and 80s. But this being in competition, I think, speaks to that it might be uh, an interesting film, well made, well assembled in general. This makes me really excited. Uh, no, I think, I think people should be a little more optimistic about like the quality of this movie. I don't think it's just gonna be like some dumb, like kind of mindless political hit. It is a story of how a young Donald Trump started his real estate business, developed that in New York with the helping hand of his lawyer, Roy Cohn, who's played by Jeremy Strong. And we also yeah. have Rhea Bakalova as Ivana Trump. And this is the only film in competition that we had in our predictions, early predictions for Best Picture. It would remain in my predictions at this point. Yeah. This gives me some confidence. And what happens if you get a film from the Cannes competition in Best Picture? That is a guaranteed director nomination, just, <laughs> just so we're aware of how this works. You know, whether it's The Apprentice or something else or, or, or a couple films, that's how it works. And I also wonder if Sebastian Stan could maybe do a Best Actor prize here if people are yeah. really buzzing about him. I think maybe him or uh, Ben Wishaw are, are early yeah. contenders from what I'm seeing. Maybe even Franz Rogowski if he's in Burn a lot. I don't know that he's lead. He seems like a lead. We don't though. know who's lead. We're have to talk. Oh. We're actually talking about lead right now. Bird right now. Okay, but but I think that he does seem like he's a lead because he's the person who is the subject of interest for the protagonist. Well, people think that Barry Keoghan is the lead in this movie, which is not necessarily the case. The plot synopsis is Bailey, who's played by Nakaya Adams. I think this is a newcomer. I think this is her first film, as far as I can tell. Lives with her brother and her father, Bug. This is who Barry Kilgan is playing, her father. He's playing a, a father who had kids at a young age, who raises them alone in a squat in Northern Kent. Bug doesn't have much time to devote to them. Bailey looks for attention and adventure elsewhere. And I think she ends up being enticed with this figure named Bird, played by Franz Rogowski. Some have their eyes out on this as an awards thing. All I can really say is it, it seems like 
you know, an Andrea Arnold film, and that's all I can really do at this point. But I'm, yeah. this is one of the most exciting films in competition. I, I agree, it's one of the most exciting. Also, apparently, see, see, this is not A24. Apparently, oh. it is actually not. Who and is it? And it is up for grabs. My takeaway is that this has an indie vibe to it. A good comparison seems like American Honey or uh, Honey Boy. Not not intentionally putting the honeys together. Honeyland, the documentary about bees. No, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say it's kind of... We have a debut film in competition called Wild Diamond. This director did a short film that seemed to have a, a similar subject matter about somebody being enticed by like reality TV. It's about a 19 year old who's like obsessed with the idea of wanting to be somebody with beauty I and guess, she gets cast uh, on a show called Miracle Island. Yeah. So it seems cool like, you know, debut films and competition is a very big deal for the filmmakers. It's also a cool subject matter and to name the show Miracle Island, you can definitely see how it's probably a satire on the reality TV culture. So I'm excited for that based on the synopsis. You got Amelia Perez from Jacques Audiard, former Palm winner for D-Pan, also known for A Prophet, Rust and Bone, very acclaimed prominent French filmmaker who goes to Cannes very often. This film seems to have dual protagonists from what I can understand. One is Zoe Saldana. She plays a corrupt lawyer who is trying to get out of her business. The other protagonist who's also trying to get out of their business is a trans woman cartel leader looking to fully transition. Furthermore, this has Selena Gomez in it. She and Selena Gomez has said this is a musical and that it is in entirely in Spanish. It's in like the cartel crime thriller world too. This film's exciting because I don't really know what to expect, especially with the musical element. It seems like it will be a really fun and wild ride. We got a film Caught by the Tides from Zhang Kijia who directed Ash is Purest White and A Touch of Sin, some films that are pretty acclaimed. This director goes to Cannes all the time. And this also stars Tao Zhao, who is in all his damn films. She's in like all his movies. So this is one to look out for, mostly just because of the director, I would say. We got Grand Tour from Miguel Gomez. This director did the Arabian Nights trilogy, which some people may know, a film called Taboo, which was on a bunch of critics lists back in like 2011. And most recently, The Suga Diaries. It takes place in 1917 and it's black and white. The plot synopsis indicates that it's a melancholic voyage of Asia. It's a couple walking around Asia, kind of in limbo about the state of their relationship. That's what it seems like. Definitely a film with critics in its sight, less so general audiences, but I'm really excited. I'll definitely be seeing it. You know, you got kinds of kindness showing up in oh, competition. Yeah. This makes the early release date for this film kind of fit more. We haven't talked about this since it got a trailer, and the trailer yeah. makes me think that we were correct in, in the assessment that this is not poor things, all right? I really, really don't think it's gonna be an Oscar thing. Like, we just do not. No, it, it, it looks like kind of like outrageous and- And funny yeah, and, and it's crazy. it's an anthology, so, yeah. you know, maybe you could squeeze in a screenplay nomination or somebody in supporting is like really that standout, but like, Overall, we're excited for the new Lanthimos. Yeah. He's not working with Tony McNamara on this one, so he's you know writing with his writing partner that did The Lobster Killing of a Sacred Deer Dog Tooth. More of a zany film, I, I would say. Yeah, seems kind of zany. And certainly with a lower budget than Poor Things. We have a movie called Beating Hearts from Gilles Lelouch. I don't know how to speak French. Is um, it Giles? I don't know. I don't know how to speak French. This director has actually never had anything like at Cannes before, and their past couple films aren't necessarily that acclaimed. Apparently this is also like a musical somehow. Adele X. Archopolis is in it, which, you know, that that automatically gives you like so much can cred for her to mm -hmm. be in something. Her and Leia Seydoux go just about every year. This year is no different. It's about a girl from an upper middle class family and a boy from a modest background who fall in love. And then he eventually becomes a criminal. Audrey Dewan has a writing credit. I guess that's sort of interesting. I don't know what to say about it though. I think this is probably one like if I were you at Cannes, I would probably just wait for the reviews to see if this mm. is like worth seeing. We got Limonov the Ballad, directed by Kirill Serebrennikov. He did a film called Petrov Slu that got a lot of buzz in its year at Cannes. I saw his film Tchaikovsky's Wife, which I think was weak story-wise, but extremely strong visually. Like I would be very excited to see anything he makes after seeing that film, just on that alone. And this one stars Ben Wishaw and is based on a novel. It's like a fictional biopic. It's this character, Edward Limonov, who's a radical Soviet poet who becomes a bum in New York City, a sensation in France, and a political anti-hero in Russia. So he's some kind of Forrest Gump. Uh, I could see Ben Wishaw. Forrest Gump, it says he beca becomes a bum. No, I know, I'm just saying that like, it's this guy who's just doing a bunch of shit, like living a crazy life and having all these different identities. Maybe comparing it to Forrest Gump is weird. It's gonna be outrageous. Ben Wishaw, I think it's gonna go like, you know, 
11. He's going to go yeah. 11 on this in yeah. this role. I think that this could win him best actor at Cannes potentially. Yeah. I'm excited for this movie. I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear what you think about this movie. Movie called Marcello Mio from Christophe Honore. This director goes to Cannes a lot, so he's one of those Cannes regulars. It doesn't seem like he's made anything that has the consensus of being any kind of like masterpiece. Again, if I were you, I'd probably wait for the reviews to see if this is like a must see or whatever. The plot is a woman decides she's going to bring her deceased father back by becoming him and embodying him, dressing like him. Don't know much more about that, but it says it's a comedy. We got Megalopolis. This was announced mm. not today, but you know, this, this movie had some like screenings. It had one screening where Francis Ford Coppola brought all of his buddies to see the film and they gave it some nice press. Like that's, that's, that was what was going to happen at that screening was that the movie gets some very good press and people say, oh my buzz. God, look at the achievement because they want to build some buzz for the movie and they want some, a studio to buy it. This is a very tricky sell. I'm sure being a can and getting all that buzz is going to help it, hopefully. Unless it's like, you know, mixed reviews or whatever. The thing that confused me is Francis Ford Coppola only a couple weeks ago seemed to say, we will not be distributing this at a festival before we get a release from major studios. Really trying to get a release for the fall secured for his $120 million self-finance project. And so far it doesn't seem like it's going well because the second screening w was with studio executives and the buzz out of that is that they don't want to touch the movie. It really confirms that the film is going in the direction of being divisive at best, like maybe positive divisive. It's very out there. But maybe yeah. even just not most people's cup of tea, like not good. I don't think it's gonna be bad. I think it will be divisive. I, I think, think it'll, it'll have Bardo. its fans. I think it will be Bardo. Studios are don't want to touch it because they don't know what to do with it. And the quotes from the least optimistic among them say the film is unmarketable like un unmarketable and, and, and they or just or just plain not good even with the cast though i mean the cast is insane on this movie i think you can market it off of francis ford coppola and the cast these days it doesn't seem like and a that, cast yeah. and a director alone i mean look at what happened though with the last duel even like, even killers of the flower moon that did pretty well it didn't do that well it did well it enough for the that well. Apple is bringing people to their streaming platform as well. So there was that. Well, that's nice, but I'm just saying it didn't do that well. For a film with one of the most acclaimed directors working today and then the, the most famous actor, arguably Leonardo DiCaprio working today, for that movie not to pull money, Megalopolis doesn't have a good chance at the Wait, box office. Let's no. be real. That'll be one of the big questions of the festival is, is somebody going to pick up this movie? And also, is it going to be perceived as a good idea that it went to Cannes? Like, will the buzz out of Cannes be, oh, this is something you really have to see? Or will it be like, that was a total misfire? I'm sure it'll have a nice standing O oh, and some critics that are like really going to bat for it. Obviously, I'm extremely pumped for it because, you know, those studio exec reactions did not make me unexcited. They may have done the opposite because some of them have said it's very experimental. So I'm very excited. We got Motel Destino from Kareen Inos. We last heard from this director when he did Firebrand, which was pretty mid, but he has a good track record. He does. And he's going back to his Brazilian roots. This is an erotic thriller. We have O Canada. This was a surprise to me. Paul Schrader's film is in competition. In competition, I can. It is about Leonard Fife. This is a true story. Uh, he is a draft evader who fled to Canada. To, to avoid Vietnam War. To avoid serving in Vietnam. And this is about him sharing his secrets to demythologize his mythologized life. Jacob Elordi and Richard Gere play this character at different ages. Uma Thurman is also in it. I don't really know what to expect from the film, but... Paul Schrader has not been in competition since 1988 with Patty Hearst, wow. and he also was there for Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters. So this is that's pretty cool that he's he's, yeah. he's back after so many decades. You have Partenope from Paolo. Partenope, probably. Uh, maybe, maybe. Paolo Sorrentino's doing this. Did The Hand of God, which I didn't love, but The Great Beauty I really like. And it won the Oscar. This is probably going to be Italy's submission as well, and The Hand of God is their submission. Okay. It's, it is said to be a feminine epic that tells the long journey of Parthenope's life, which is this, this woman, from her birth in 1950 until today. It seems more along the lines of a kind of abstract and like ethereal The Great Beauty because of this plot synopsis. Paolo Sorrentino doing more of what he does. Gary Gary Oldman is in this, but do not mistake this for him being in the lead. Oh yeah. If you no, put no, him no, in no. your lead actor predictions, I think he's you. barely in the movie. I think he yeah. makes a cameo and I know there's an image of him in it, but often 
a reliable source for who is actually in the film, who who has a prominent role, is TMDB. You look at the order that the cast is listed. This will differ from IMDB. IMDB sorts it by like star meter, I think. So TMDB seems to be who is actually the protagonist is always first and then, you know, goes down from there. He's not in the top like eight, nine. I don't even know where he is. He's very low on the list. We have The Girl with the Needle from director Magnus von Horn. The film is set in an impoverished post-World War I Copenhagen and it centers on a hidden adoption agency responsible for finding homes for women who cannot take care of their children. But there's a dark twist in this film which the plot synopsis doesn't give away so I'm not going to say it but if you're interested to know the story it's based off of you can find that on Wikipedia. The film does seem like it will be quite dark. It is in black and white. It's from the EO cinematographer. This film is very intriguing like the subject matter is really interesting and I'm intrigued by the cinematographer. Yeah, I think there's a chance that this could get a cinematography nomination. Uh, See, I, I agree that we should be looking out for black and white movies. For cinematography, obviously El Conde really solidifies that. It seems very different from the director's last film, which was called Sweat. We have the shrouds from David Cronenberg. We knew that this was happening. Can't say that Cronenberg's recent work has really gotten me that pumped up. I mean, I would say like little Cronenberg's work has gotten me more pumped up. Infinity Pool and Possessor. I know like Crimes of the Future and Cosmopolis have their fans, but I'll, I could just say that I'm not one of them. But this is an innovative businessman and grieving widower builds a device to connect with the dead inside a burial shroud. The cast is great. Vincent Cassell, Diane Kruger, Guy Pierce are in it. So, you know, it'll probably be worth seeing even if it is underwhelming because you, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep watching the Cronenberg films. Finally, in competition, we have The Substance, and this one I think is quite interesting, quite interesting. This is the second film from director Coraline Fargeet. Apparently it's distributed by Universal. Universal has the rights to distribute this movie. And it says Margaret Qualley, Demi Moore, and Dennis Quaid. But this is a, mm. apparently a very bloody body horror film. Her previous film was called Revenge, had an 81 on Metacritic. Also very bloody and violent and Intense. abrasive. Yeah. A weird movie for a can competition, but I, you know, very welcome. It's interesting to see a studio horror movie in, in a competition like I this. think it's probably not going to be that studio. -y. I mean, the, the director said that her influences are like, you know, Cronenberg and Haneke and, you know, South Korean films. Like, yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be... But 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 I'm saying I think it's interesting studio you, because yeah. you said it's universal. Yeah, I don't understand that part either. Yeah. So that is the competition. And I would say that like a, a very large number of those films are exciting me. A very mm -hmm. like 75% like of them probably. Yep. You know, maybe I should just see all of them. Maybe, maybe that should be my goal is to see no. a competition film. No. You don't think so? No, because you're going to have films in uncertain regard section or the mm. premiere section or, you know, we also don't have the lineups for the director's Fortnite and Critics Week, mm. which, you know, they they that, they brought us after Sun last year. They brought the Sweet East. They, there's usually a couple gems in there that you'll want to see as well. Do you want to talk about any of those out of competition films? Yeah, there's a few out of competition films that we got to talk about. I mean, Furios is going to be there. You know, yeah. we know all about that. We don't need to say uh, Apparently the, the footage at, at CinemaCon, people were very impressed. All right. Yeah, so but that's every re all the reactions out of CinemaCon are going to be extremely positive. That's mostly true. They basically get people up into in a pep rally setting and they show them some of their favorite clips from the movie that they're going to go nuts over and then they go nuts on Twitter. The most nuts reactions float to the top of your feed and then people who don't go nuts aren't going to tweet about it. Whatever. That's probably true, but I heard it was good. Also, Horizon and American Saga Chapter 1 is premiering mm -hmm. here. Apparently, Chapter 1 and 2 is not going to be all that there is to this series. Yeah, there's going to be four chapters. That's kind of interesting that they're premiering the first one here. I mean, look, having a blockbuster slot at Cannes doesn't necessarily mean your film is great. They, mm -hmm. I think Fast X premiered there, or one of the Fast films did. Well, I think Horizon Indiana Jones good, last though. year is, 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 you know, that's, you know, an elemental. I'm actually looking forward to Horizon, though. The main gripe people have with these sorts of westerns, and especially, like, this one with the musical score hearkening back to older westerns and like those American values is like those films were glossing over like the Native American atrocities that were committed. I did read a quote from Kevin Costner and he seems very aware of the oppression and and of like the land stealing and, and the genocide of the Native American people so that's enough for me to be like all right we're gonna give this one a good shot. Very exciting, I think, is rumors. So I don't think I did enough of my research when I put this very low on our Oscar predictions because if I had, I wouldn't have put it on at all. Oh, wow. But this is saying, this is like not meant as a diss. Guy Madden, Evan Johnson, and Galen Johnson 
these these folks brought you the green fog and the forbidden room which are like bizarre hazy colorful art house films yeah and visually you know we got a couple clips from this from like bleaker streets uh preview of what what they're releasing this year and it looks very much the same it's like people wandering around in the woods you got kate blanchett and alicia vikander somehow these directors are pulling a stacked cast for this new film, yeah. and Charles Dance is in it as well. I, you should see this, is yeah. all I'm going to oh, say. Oh, of course. You should definitely Absolutely. see this. It's about the leaders of seven wealthy democracies who get lost in the woods while trying to draft a, a statement on a global crisis, facing danger as they attempt to find their way out. So this is somehow like this weird political satire, yep. I guess. Sounds pretty singular. The new Leos Carax project is mm. here as well. Mm. It is 40 minutes long, so it's technically oh. not even a feature. It's called It's Not Me. It's a freeform self-portrait of himself, mm. which revisits, you know, 40 years of the author's filmography and questions the major stations of his life while capturing the political tremors of the time. That's what the synopsis says. Denis Levant is in it, who starred in Holy Motors. Playing the same character? Is that yes, what you're me? I think they are, they are playing the same characters. Revisiting more than 40 years of the author's filmography. So it's not just him talking about himself. It's like a cinematic exploration. The director of The Blue Kaftan, Nabil Ayuj, has a new film. And I saw The Blue Kaftan at TIFF a couple years ago. It was pretty good. That got a lot of acclaim. So it was a little bit of her breakout. Noemi Merlant is directing a film. Mm co-written by Celine Sciamma, her buddy Celine Sciamma. I, I'm actually very, very interested in this from the plot synopsis. Naomi Merlot is also in the film. And it's about three women stuck in an apartment during a heat wave. Sounds kind of awesome. And it's gonna be an exciting debut for Naomi Merlot. And that's all about all the films that I took note of. Most of the Uncertain Regard films are like, okay, you know, maybe like Renata Rhimes was in like one movie, but like, I don't, I, I, I'm not gonna mention it just for that. Like most of them are just kind of wait and see, I think, and mm -hmm. half of them are debuts. I usually end up seeing a few of those movies. Yeah. And how common is it for them to add films after they announce the lineup? Is that common? I think it happens like, every once in a while. I remember Vortex was a late edition. We didn't get Emmanuel, we didn't get The End, but we can expect, you know, some of those films to be at fall festivals. Everybody say, mm -hmm. have a good voy voyage, brother bro. Hopefully we distilled for you a lot of the relevant information, especially about those in-competition films, and I really look forward to covering those films and seeing them. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. How jealous are you that I get to see Megalopolis?